Terror on the Tube. Welcome to Terror on the Tube, where we watch and discuss horror. I, I could talk horror <laughs> and suspense made for TV you movies. Messed up my freeze face. I <laughs> know from the seventies, eighties, and occasionally nineteen nineties. I am Gilman Joel, and I'm joined by my co-hosts, Pumpkinhead Peter, hello, and the Horror Unicorn, <laughs> aka Allison. Hi. So, uh, for those people that are... who are wondering, watching, yes, mm-hmm. this is on my head. I had it here before. Joel complained about noises, so I put it on my head. It's festive. Yes. It's yes. Uh, well, we're recording this a couple of like two days before New Year's Eve, so yes. and so yeah, yes. So, uh, it's very cold here where I'm at in, in the swamp. Uh, it's uh, very chilly in my in, we're in the video <laughs> shop here, so I'm I'm, I'm decked out yeah. in, a, in a sweater. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, but yeah. So those that are just listening, come on over to uh, to Mom and Pop Video Shop on YouTube and check out the video version of this episode. But in the meantime, we are covering a movie that I feel like, at least for me personally, is going to go significantly better than last time. Uh, we are covering <laughs> "Don't Go to Sleep" from 1982. And Peter, do you have a synopsis? Oh, well, what's with that? I don't know. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, Don't Go to Sleep from 1982. Uh, it was released on ABC on Friday, December 10th in 1982. And let's see. A young girl becomes begins seeing the ghost of her sister who died in an accident a year earlier. That's one of the synopsis. Mm-hmm. Is, please. Yep. And it's yeah. fairly... Fairly I'd, accurate. Yeah, I'd say it's fairly accurate. Um, apparently, people like us, I put up on that I was watching this, and uh, at least I think Karen Wagner and, and Nathan Bartlebaugh and a couple of others are like, oh, it's just for tearing the tube because they were excited about it. Oh, right, cool. Excellent. Well, I will say, and again, not to let anything out of the bag, but compared to last time, I too was excited about it. But I will say <laughs> that for me, the bar was exceedingly yeah. low. <laughs> okay. Um, so. Let's kick it over to the horror unicorn and find out. Hang on, there. Because I don't remember what you said last time, Allison. Had you seen this one before? No, I actually was aware of it, though. And there have been a couple times where I'd almost watched it. And then, because I'm not adverse to spoilers, I read about it a little bit and thought, I don't know if I'm in the right mind frame for this. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) I, I passed on it multiple times, and then... but. But I was, I like Valerie Harper a lot, who's in yes. this, and this will be her third time being in something that we covered for this yes. show. Yes. Um, and everything she's been in that we've watched has been really good, I feel like. Um, she is, no. she is my anti Lucci. Right? I was thinking that. <laughs> I was thinking that you were going to feel that way. Yeah. But I have to say, like, without giving too much away right off the top, I feel like I would describe this to someone as if. Ari Aster made an early '80s made-for-television yes, movie. Yes, <laughs> that's <perfect>. so messed <laughs> up. That is perfect. I didn't even think of that. Oh my like, god, Whoa. that is perfect. That is. Oh, it's dark. This is a dark, <laughs> yeah. dark TV movie. Yeah, Drew yeah. was at work when uh, yep. I watched it, and I was describing it to him as when he get, got home, and I was like. I almost offered to be like, if you want to watch it again, we can watch it again. And I thought, not twice in one night. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, listen, I watched this in the dark with headphones on. Ooh, nice. Uh. (laughs) Now, wait, hold on. Certain scenes here that are uh, that are kind of haunts you. Did I? Did either of you watch the creature features version? That's what I watched. I I did, and also. Jackie Kong was the guest again. I know. How awesome was that? I was like, that's super weird. Well, it makes it, it made me happy because, um, uh, uh, hold on. I had something that's sending off, uh, alarms in the background there. All right. Um, I was super happy because yeah, again, I love Jackie Kong and the fact that she was in the previous episode was 
like not okay because it's like now I associated her being on that show. But then I was like, I love the the next one we did. She was the which I'm guessing from the way she talked about her comics. I think yeah. this episode of Creature Features had come out like a year or so before that one. Yeah, it I'm was guessing. it was like two years ago is when they did oh, this, okay. this one. I, I looked I didn't at even the, look, yeah. the date on yeah. it. Because I was yeah, curious. I was like, well, you know, they don't have the same people on all the time. So Yeah, 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 yeah. But I know uh, that was super cool to see her on there. And uh um I just I just love her. I love her 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 spirit. She, she's got this great, like, kind of like I don't give a crap yeah. <laughs> quality to her, and I love that about her. Um, yeah, so I too had never seen that. Peter, had you heard about this movie before? I've heard the title. I mean, there's a lot of these don't movies, but yeah. I've heard the title "Don't Go to Sleep." And I was like, "Oh, okay." And then I saw. Who I don't think I like, had though. I I know all the oh, don't. Right? Yeah. Don't go in the basement. Don't go in the yeah, woods. Yeah, yeah. All of those. <laughs> but, don't go in the house and all. That. But I. We, that's why when you guys when we picked this, I think you picked it right. I said you were the last one to pick. Yeah. Uh, and we, and when we said that when we said the title, I thought, "Oh my god." I'm super excited. I have a feeling I'm going to get my heart broken again uh, because I feel like a don't go or don't do the thing movie has the potential to be awesome, especially early eighties. Right. But then mm -hmm. I will say, normally I go into these 100% blind. I have no idea what we're doing. I don't read anything about them, but because I was trying to get some things set up, for the show and I knew I wasn't going to get to watch. It. Actually, I just finished it like an hour or so ago. Uh, mm -hmm. And so I knew I wasn't going to get to watch it till like right up to the line. I had gone in and the, the most of the images, which I, it's kind of hard to make out is our background image. It's like the ad from the newspaper. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, yeah. and that image where it says, you know, don't go to sleep. And I don't remember, I'd have to remove me. Hold on. Maybe if I do that real quick. Uh -huh. Well, I, do you remember what it says, Peter? Hang on, I could read it. Hang on. Yeah, what does Hang it say on. on the actual ad? Because I uh, I read that and I thought, okay, <laughs> <laughs> this has got potential. But and while you're looking it up, but then the other thing was I then saw in one of the images Dennis Weaver and Valerie Harper. I was like, oh my god, wait, wait uh, what? <laughs> Both of them? Yeah. For the, the lady I got from, it here. What is it? What does it say on the? Mary ad? thinks there's something alive under her bed. Mary is right. That is an awesome, <laughs> yep. awesome bit of advertising. Like that, I saw it. It's like, oh my god, I'm getting my hopes up way too high now. Yeah, and then and then again, Valerie Harper and Dennis Weaver is like, yes. okay, and Ruth and Ruth Gordon too, actually. Oh, yeah. and I, I, didn't, I didn't realize that till after. Yeah, so Ruth Gordon, uh, Oliver Robbins from the same yeah, yeah, year, yeah. he's in Poltergeist. Poltergeist, in yeah. Oh my god. So I'm sure we'll get to all of them. But the thing that struck me was, so we covered, like you said. Before Allison, this is the third Valerie Harper movie. The other two were People Across the Lake, and it's it Night, Night Terror, Dr Night Terror, right? But it's also yeah, called Night, Night Drive. Yeah, I think Night Drive. It was also called Night Drive. I yeah, think, but Night which, Terror and People on the, Across the Lake. You know, which is one of my favorite subgenres, which is you know, oh, Terror on the Highway, which of mm -hmm. course Dennis <laughs> Weaver is in what I would yeah. call the crown jewel of that subgenre, Duel. So yep. uh, that is just when I saw both of them on this, I was like, oh my god, this can't suck. Please do not stop. <laughs> so um, I, mean, I Dennis will say Weaver has this weird uh, the, the way his acting or the way he's kind of like almost like he's off. If that makes any sense, and he's he's like this and everything he 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 has that I don't know. It's kind of like that, like he's not like he kind of belongs in another place, which kind of fits when he did McLeod, if, if any of remember that show yeah. where he's kind of like that. And he was like, kind of like taken out of it. And he's, it, it's the same with this one. It's I feel it, it. I don't know. I, and I love Dennis Weaver. So I don't know. It, he feels like he almost wants to be somewhere else. Well, I think the character gave that vibe. Oh, well, definitely. Yeah. 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 And yeah. as soon as he saw his uh, uh, his mother-in-law, he definitely wanted to be somewhere else. No one <laughs> wanted her there. Well, and that's the thing. Is so right. I'm gonna lay all the cards on the table. I freaking love this movie. Like this is top <laughs> tier for me now. Like really? I, it's not my it's not my absolute favorite we've ever done, but it's up there, man. It's I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I thought mainly because, and we'll get into it. The the direction and cinematography on this thing, I thought was shockingly good for an early '80s made-for-TV movie. Yeah. There are some. <laughs> There are some very creative, clever camera angles, some transitions that are very darkly, ironically funny. Like when someone dies, I won't say who just yet, and they pull up the next shot, them pulling a plug out of mm -hmm. a wall. 
I mean, the that, smashed watermelon. Oh, the, oh, a character falls off a roof yep. right after somebody, and then somebody Black. drops a watermelon. Yep. That is amazing. Also, Great there were irony. multiple reaction shots from an iguana, which I yes. really love. Yeah, I yeah, yeah, yeah. Ed. Ed the iguana, I began to suspect might be actually behind the whole thing because they <laughs> yeah, do pet them a lot. Totally. Yeah, I think wait, I think Nathan Bartleball called it uh, uh, iguana cam. Into the yeah. the mother in law. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean this. That, I mean this movie is creepy from the get go. Really, you don't really get any build up as such because many of these movies you get like everything is all hunky dory. This one sets up the creep factor fairly early with the music and some of the shots and uh well, even the opening and hearing sequence, voices the credit the opening credits peter because yeah, we go Mary. from we, we, we see this family <laughs> they're they're traveling to move presumably because you see like a trailer yeah. and and i don't know why i love movies that's and stories that start that way where it's because it's like a new beginning right they're, yeah, yeah, they're yeah. going on a journey yep. and adventure a lot of them started like that yeah a lot of movies do and i love it so when they but but the way they did it you had this like they're driving and the music is oh, yeah, the, one yeah, way was, and yeah. then they do these like very stark blank yeah. title cards and the music shifts and it keeps yeah. going back and for, it's very, <laughs> yeah, it's very, it's very with, yeah it's off-putting yeah because yeah, you have yeah. when, when you have the title cards it's very nicey nicey music and then you when you see yeah. them drive you're almost waiting for an accident or something really terrible to happen what were you gonna say, Allison? Did you two notice the address of the place they moved in? Yes. Yep. <laughs> okay, what is it? Tell, tell them what it is. Tell them what it is. Thirteen six six six. I love like, it. Dude, you pull into so the driveway. That's the new house address. Like maybe what? not. Nope. No. Maybe, maybe <laughs> that's what I wrote. Wrote underneath. <laughs> I mean, come on. Well, what? Here's what I loved about this movie. Is that the writing of it? And look, it's very like you go on one level, you can say, okay, it's very surface level family with lots of problems and there's mm -hmm. lots of familial melodrama and all that. But what they did really, really well is they plant these little things in the audience's mind, like 13666, which is going to make you, oh, the house has got to be possessed, right? The house, there's something mm -hmm. up with the house because it's a house number for God's sake. But that sets you down a road in your head that is. In possibly, I, I'm sure we'll spoil this eventually as we get through this. But but it but it's it's not your assumptions are not what you think they are. And just like as it plays out with certain characters and them experiencing maybe supernatural events that may not may or may not be real, or is it all in their head? Like all the way up, literally to the final shot of this movie, you think it's one thing and it's something else. Yeah. Oh man, that last shot. <laughs> oh yeah, it's creepy. Uh huh. No, but again, you set it up like uh, this is about, I don't know, a year after the, uh, an, an accident that we don't really see uh, in the flashback until the very end. But you build up that there's uh, the, the normal siblings. They're teasing each other in yeah. the car and all that. And then you get the, uh, he's starting, uh, I don't know, it was in a new, in, not a new job, but another. I thought it was a job. Office? I thought yeah. I, I, I had a new career somewhere. Yeah. yeah. So everything is kind of new, and then they have a big house, and the the, the mother in law is moving in with them, which he's not all that happy about, and apparently not the kids either. But you set up kind of like a a, a, a nicey nicey tension at the start of the movie, like, like a normal bickering with the siblings and uh, parents, and about the the mother in law. And then when they drive up, oh look, how how did she beat us to it? And then it shifts, and the tension gets serious well what, here's what i did i don't know if this jumped out to either of you like what i found refreshing was so ruth gordon is the mom uh, is the mother-in-law <laughs> yeah. grandma and, and it was a I, yeah but she but for sure she's ruth gordon and she's amazing i don't know if you've seen yeah. harold and maude but that is wow. one of the great that is one of the truly great films uh of and it was what, like 1970 did that come out i think it was like 70 yeah. right was right, right that. Love yeah. That, yeah. I, I love that movie so much but anyway set that aside for a second uh ruth gordon as only Ruth Gordon can be like, she always is kind of that character in a way, but she's just so like, I find her so interesting and wonderful. But what I loved is I got the tension between her and the father, the, the, the father, right? The son-in-law mm -hmm. that's, that's cliche, but yeah, I yeah, love yeah. it between her and the grandkids. The fact that yeah. they don't like her and she doesn't seem to like them. That is totally outside of the typical dynamic mm -hmm. they would put in a movie like this. Yeah. We all, we all kind of know what grandchild was her favorite. Because the I photos she puts up, and all of the photos are the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, they, but but what's so cool is they never 
they never explicitly say the obvious crap. No. They let it unfold yeah. gradually. The pictures are put up. And like, and by the way, back to the great direction and, and editing and cinematography, there's this, like, so all the pictures are on this, on this uh, dresser. And there's a scene where the mom moves one and Ruth Gordon must be sitting on the bed and her face is in the mirror. And yeah. it reveals, there's a lot of that. Like it reveals her. And then later on she goes back to the room and it's a shot of that, that same picture. And they rack focus yeah. to reveal Ruth Gordon's face perfectly outlined by the granddaughter's yep. face. And it's these little touches. They're not overdone. It's not like it feels self-conscious. It's just really artistic. Honestly, I was actually really pleasantly surprised by how well, thought out and done the movie was yeah and also with the with, like you said you, it's not said outright the the animosity well well yeah you could say animosity because she walks around with an unlit cigarette in her mouth and says yeah. she stopped smoking sure yeah, yeah. and then <laughs> then every time she kind of uh, stumbles on the sun says, mm -hmm. oh are you snooping again and yeah. then his look and it's like, yeah, and I'm telling. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the family dynamics. She's right. This is this is like very much like Ari Aster made a freaking TV movie in 1982. <laughs> That's what this feels like. It's got that same and level of like almost like house. you're you're uncut. You know what it is? You're uncomfortable to witness what you're witnessing. Like you feel like this is like how people would probably really would have acted with their family. A lot of people. I and love so dramas like this. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's, yeah, it's uncomfortable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, Ruth Gordon was definitely giving the, the mean grandma realness, but yeah, I kind of loved that she was giving the kids a hard time because kids are annoying. <laughs> well, especially, like, yeah. Especially those kids. And especially, yeah. like, and I, and I and I can speak only for myself here, but let's just say my my sister and I had a very similar dynamic, minus the homicide. Where although it could have potentially gotten there, where where we we were that bickering and fighting was incessant. Like it was yeah. didn't become a cop though. My What's two, that? My two younger she siblings. Didn't a cop. Yeah, fair enough. What, what was that, Allison? <laughs> oh, my two younger siblings. It was like you, if I was when I was in high school. They were in elementary school, and they were only two years apart. And road trips were hell. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. See, and and I don't know what the dynamic is at play, but so my sister and I are about three ish years apart, a little more than three years. And I, you know, be I was older, and so whereas I had friends who had older sisters, and they never had that dynamic. So I don't know what the dynamic is there with us. Now it didn't help. I'm sure that our parents were divorced, and there was a lot of unresolved issues, and you know, and so I think we oftentimes would would deal with our own issues at each other because it was easier, quite frankly. Yeah, uh, totally. siblings. And, yeah, and siblings. But it's like we. It was horrible. Like you ask my parents, it was like it was hell. Like <laughs> it was dealing with us. It was hell. I acknowledge that it was totally horrible. But that's why when I saw these kids now. I will say that I like I like Oliver Robbins. I think he was great as as Robbie in um, in Poltergeist, of course, yeah. uh, which is the same year that this movie came out. And but he I will was say the second one too. So. And yes, he was. He the braces. Remember the braces <laughs> yep. coiling all around him. Uh, but the girl who plays Mary, Robin, Robin Ignico. Ignicio or Nicio? Nicio I maybe? Have, Ignicio. I don't know. It's spelled I G N I C O. It's uh, it's it. You know, it, it must be Italian. I was I was going to make a fragile joke, but I got nothing. Okay. Uh, 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 Ign Ign she will appear in another TV movie later on. Really? Okay. Yeah, so well, she was yeah. an Annie, and yep. I thought I recognized her. She was in 1982's Annie, but she I thought was really good. Like as kid actors yeah. go, who had to carry a lot of this, she. Well, was we will just, get to the last scenes too. Oh yeah! Oh, oh my god! Yeah, because oh, wow. she she was she's cute and seems wholesome and sweet on some level, but there was this menacing element to her every once in a while. But it never felt overdone. Like it didn't have that. Like I'm I'm evil. Uh, it was never like that. So that. Yeah created this dynamic where you're like i don't know is she what's going on I, I, they, were, they went out of their way not to show whoever was doing the crimes so you mm -hmm. just didn't know was it her was it something you didn't know i love that well the only the one crime we saw who did it was when the the brother went out and said no more mr nice guy and he yes. re records these evil things on his uh, tape recorder yeah. and plays it at night yep and he was yeah. really fast in getting that. I was like, my, ki my you... kids were impressed. What am I saying? I was like, all right, hurry up, get to the closet. All right, yeah. yeah, go. <laughs> Did you get back in bed? Right, spending a long time sleep. with the with that tape recorder, <laughs> throwing yeah. it away. Yep. Yeah. So, so Allison, then I assume though you uh, as as our terror of the two movies go, 
you liked this one at least a decent amount, correct? Yeah, I thought it was really good. It was, um, I thought it was really depressing, but I thought yeah. it was really yeah. good. Yeah. So anybody who has not seen this movie, I think from this point forward, I think we've we've da danced around a few key elements that we're going to have to talk about. If you haven't seen this yeah. legit, it's on YouTube. Watch the Creature Features version. Support those folks because that show is awesome yeah. and I love it. It's and always stop, great. Stop this now. Yeah, stop yeah. it now. Come back yeah. to it because I because we're because we're gonna spoil. Honestly, this is a spoil worthy movie. Like as far as you will be upset that you went in knowing certain things. I would have been like I yeah. didn't want to. I w I was more enjoyable because I didn't know what you end up finding out. So that'll be said. You've been well, warned. So now if you're and as, as somebody who, like I said, I read about it a little bit year like a couple years back when I considered watching it. I didn't know all of the things that were going to, to the happen. degree. Yeah, I so had let's no just, idea how yeah. far it was going to go. <laughs> oh, so mm -hmm. I think, well, let's just lay all the cards on the table. This movie literally has almost every single member of this family get murdered. Like, nope. it is so yep. <laughs> dark. Like, it's I, uh, dark by most I standards. Tabs. <laughs> it, oh, my God. So right off the bat, right, we've got the fact that this, it turns out this daughter has died. So a young, like, 12, 13-year-old daughter, whatever she would have been at the yeah, time. Jennifer. Yeah, Jennifer, the oldest kid. She died in a car accident. It's gradually revealed. Again, it's never like expository dump. It's like the writing of this is so much. It's so funny because I'm sure in 1982, people would have treated this like as the most like vanilla, like run of the mill, made for TV movie, no big deal. But writing to me, now not all writing, there's still some good writing that comes out, but so much of like, especially a lot of things on streaming, Disney Plus, that is like so badly written that when you Wait, see what? something like this, <laughs> wh where it's like actual decent effort to have themes and ideas and exposition weaved throughout the yeah. narrative without just slamming Please. you over the head with it. Let's what? get credit of the, the, the writing. The, it's written by a guy named Ned Wynn. Yes, w -Y -N -N. I, saw I don't know what else Ned has done, nope. but good on you, but Ned. If he only did this one, Good on you. Yes. It, it, he, it looks like he was actually an actor. He was in 13 different okay. things. Uh, he Win. wrote five separate movies. I uh, recognize none of them. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is the only one. Uh, Matt Houston is a TV series. That's oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. familiar to yeah, me, but, I've seen that one. But nothing else. Even the movie. Actually, the, the kid who played Mary was in, in a couple of episodes of Matt Houston, too. Oh, okay. Well, well, the he was in as an actor, and I've heard Beach Blanket Bingo. That's what it was in Net Funicello, Frankie Avalon. Oh, yeah, 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 movies. Yeah, I remember yeah. seeing as a kid. He was in How to Stuff a Wild Bikini, which I think is also another one of their. Mm -hmm. Oh, he was okay. in, he was in Son of Flubber, <laughs> okay. and the Absent Minded Professor. Oh, that's cool. There okay. you go. Okay. Small, he was a boy and an uncredited boy in the Absent Minded Professor. Well, there were a bunch of those. So. Oh, and the Bell Boy, which is the old. Uh, um, um, Jerry, Jerry Lee Lewis. Jerry, I'm not yeah, Jerry, yeah. Lewis. Jerry that Lewis. On my shelf. Yeah. yeah, I have yeah. that on my shelf. Yeah. Well, if uh, you look at the director, I mean, you don't really. Uh, well, he he directed a couple of uh, episodes of uh, Harry O and Kung Fu, but if you look like, uh, let's see, like TV movies, I did one, Doctor yeah. Scorpion. I don't know what that is. Dark Mirrors. I kind of know. In like Flynn, I know I've seen that yeah. one, but yeah, I know that one. It's not really. Between the like the writing credits and the director, it's not really anything that jumps out at you like like that that you'd expect this one to come from both of them. Yeah, I would say, and I don't know how you two feel about this, but one thing I that really jumped out at me is the I go back to like the, the direction and the camera work, just the staging of the actors that there were a lot of just very it's very subtle, but the way the camera moves and tracks like this movie always felt like it was going somewhere mm -hmm. and my big issue with the last one we covered i swear to god i'm not going to beat a dead horse on this um but Wait, a cold no. night's death was it just felt like okay we get it all right yeah it's cold and you guys are losing it and you're starting I, no. I just, it never felt like it was me going and allison anywhere. disagrees uh, well that's fine <laughs> but this, but this movie I all I really felt like it reminded me of a video I watched where they broke down Spielberg's directing style and how he uses the camera to really fo focus your attention on Keith. Like within one shot, he'll like you know a, a, a gun will get brought up into the frame and then the camera will you know will track with the gun and then it shifts over to something and it's like it's very subtle but it's really drawing your eye through the frame. And this movie had that like there was I, again a lot of these made for tv movies you know the cameras locked down and and you could still yeah, do it still 
in this one, there's some uh, like uh, when we see her the first night they spend there, the camera is kind of like far up, and you see uh, Mary in her bed. Yes, and you see all of this. You, you, I mean, you can't help but look around. Okay, was that something? And what was that moving? And what yes. uh, is, was there something? It can, mm -hmm. You can't help but look around to see if you spot anything, and you kind of don't. Yeah, because yeah. everything is like normal shadows in a in a room. And then that creepy voice that she starts to hear. Mary. It was creepy. Like, it was legit <laughs> creepy. And I don't know. I just, although oh, my kids. And, my and kids then all of a sudden, bed on fire. Yeah. Oh, and that, okay. So, yeah. So, her bed catches <laughs> on fire. And it's straight up like, um, what, what was it? The burning bed with Farrah Fawcett. Was it that the, the movie back That's in the day? Cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. where it's like she was. I actually like, first thought that she was dreaming, and then when they opened the yes, door, I was like, "I did too." What? I, I thought so too because it it was so it were my or or in uh, um uh, Nightmare on Elm Street when they come yeah, into yeah. Nancy's yeah. mom's room, yeah. right? But but what's funny is like so they pull her out. You know, Dennis Weaver, the dad, gets the 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 fire to control. But you would have thought that. It had been like the most mundane, not, not mundane. They, they didn't act like nothing happened, but I mean, my God, your kid's entire bed was on fire. They did. They're all like, well, it's okay. Did not you, a big did deal. You notice, did you notice that uh, we've seen a scene before where the, the brother is sitting with that Bunsen burner and yes. flames shooting out. Yes. And in this scene, cause the mom takes it and puts it on, on a, like a, like a stand in the hallway. Yeah. yeah. The hallway. Yeah. Did you mean, see in, in the background? Yeah, he pushes he's kind of like he's kind of pushing it back. But see, so they don't that's what I mean. It. They did stuff like that. So you were like, okay, is he the one doing it? Like you didn't know at first. You're nope. and then him doing later on the no more Mr. Nice Guy bit where he's <laughs> but by the way, he that kid was never gonna be a, a Foley artist. That that was like the worst audio recording I've ever <laughs> seen. Like he's like taking the microphone and rubbing it against the tree and like, what are you Hang doing, on. kid? But but regardless, they did oh, a sorry. great job of laying in the like this. Yeah, yeah, it's like I don't know what that's supposed to do, but the but it was funny because then when she has her first real interaction with her sister's ghost, maybe we don't know at first, uh, and you know she obviously they've established that the kid isn't fa isn't sleeping, so because one of my kids made the comments like, why did she fall asleep? I was like, they've already established she's only getting like two hours of sleep a night, so mm. she's exhausted. She falls asleep. She sees this apparition of her sister who. It's just creepy. <laughs> like it's not overdone creepy, which makes it even creepier. It's subtle creepy, like that. Thank you, Peter. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to comment like, really quick about like yeah, please do. Why whenever we see the sister, and also sometimes sometimes the the younger sister as well, but like the older sister that died. Looks like she came off a set of Little House on the Prairie. Uh, yes. you know, like, I why are they too. dressed like that? Yes, <laughs> yes. Well, they did. There's a that... scene where the younger sister is dressed like in that blue kind of dress. Yeah. Yep. Like old... Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah I there, felt there's like... like an old timey braid. The braids. Like, yeah, right. Yeah, braids. yeah, and it yeah. looks it's adorable. They look great, but I was just like, it was it just an obsession that the parents have with an old timey look? I mean, I maybe I was a toddler in 1982, but I. I can Look tell at photos you. and stuff yeah. of like my cousins and all of us, and everybody was just wearing like big hair shirts like, with hair bears on hair. it and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, like the the mall bangs, the Farrah hair, all that stuff. But oh yeah, I, will say, I I did have two cousins that were heavily into Little House of the Prairie in around this time period, so I do wow. remember them having like a lot of books and like different things. So there, w I could see like almost like a cosplaying type of thing where because she makes the comment when she's having that maybe dream sequence where she's they reference Lance a lot and they refer reference like mm -hmm. there's this there there you could tell these are like maybe these two sisters played like they were pretend like kind of yeah. like the lab like labyrinth yeah. like in yeah, the yeah, Jennifer yeah. Connelly character she pretends like she's a princess and all that stuff. So I that that's how I took it. But that and then when Jennifer died she was wearing that so Makes yeah. sense. We all we all uh, I mean when we were kids role played every every matter of uh, like pirates and cowboys yeah, and, all that stuff. and all of that. Oh, yeah. So and nice, that's all I, that's all I do. But it made man. it creepier. It made it creepier. Yeah. And yeah. I don't know. You I notice just, it. I don't know the version you watch, Peter, but the one that Allison and I watch, I don't know if they tried to upscale the video because yeah, I think looked, they do. Yeah. They, it looked better than like the last one we watched and some yeah. of the other ones we watched where it's obviously a VHS dub, you know, but it was, it was, it added this level of creepiness to it. Cause there was moments where, especially Jennifer, her pupils almost looked like they were double, 
Like it was weird. They were bigger than they should be. And they were hmm. like, almost like they on, on my TV, it looked that way, which added to it like a level of creepiness <laughs> to the whole thing. Um, and so when you get this dynamic of the, of the sisters and like, okay, now we, we've now we're establishing that they were very close and it's, it reminded me a little bit. I know it's a totally different dynamic, but like in heavenly creatures, if you've seen that Peter Jackson film, which is fantastic where the, you know, yeah, these yeah, two yeah. girls are in like their own little fantasy world and, and they, and it leads to very untoward, horrible things that happen to one of their mothers. And it's all based on a true story. Well, this had that vibe to me, like, okay, maybe these two girls were so deep into their fantasy world that, that's what's going to cause a lot of this to happen. And so when the bed <laughs> collapses on the brother and like, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, and she's like, Oh, what happened? But the way yeah. the girl who plays Mary does it, you kind of, it's like, maybe she, she didn't act like she knew about it. It was, it was really weird. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know. I think at first she did. <laughs> Well, in the end, it turns out she didn't. Right. Like it turns yeah, out well. it probably was never her, but we'll get to that. Yeah. Ugh, yeah, that's uh, and and that whole uh, di- that whole kind of scene with uh, the two girls when they're sitting out talking, and it feels like a dream because uh, I don't know the, uh, how that looked on the copy you watched it, but yes. the, it had kind of a, like a dreamlike quality for yeah, it. Yeah, the real gauzy, soft. Yeah, 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 yeah. Focus, yeah. Mm-hmm. And the the way they're talking is like uh, it's kind of like you have to get rid of mommy and daddy, basically, yes. and your <laughs> and your uh, stable and grandma yeah. for Christ's sake. Yes. We have yeah, to get all rid of, of her. We have to get rid so, of all uh, of them. Yeah. 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 That's so what I said. That's trying, when I they're knew. They're trying to keep us apart or something. That's like that. when I knew that moment when they had that conversation. I was like, oh, oh this boy. is something different. This is, this is <laughs> not your usual. And then we get, we're, we're going to, um, how we're going to use Kevin to get to grandma. And then they cut to that shot of Ed, the iguana being carried. We don't see my own. Cam. Iguana <laughs> cam. And it gets put under the bed and they did this great, smart thing where in the set the, i'm sure you heard it in the the soundtrack you could just hear that thump 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 so right and they built that into the music the heartbeat rhythm mm-hmm. and so you know I mean, you see, they never said anything they, there's nobody having to talk about how she's going to get a heart attack and then they just she screams we cut to the close tight shot of the of the the light going off from the fire truck of the paramedics uh, vehicle and I, 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 I thought it was great. And then she comes out and they try to, and, the, and no one says anything specific, but we're able to get that. She's having a heart attack and it was caused by this. And then she freaking dies. They don't, mm-hmm. I thought they were going to save her. Like I was like, Oh, it's going one of those things yeah. where they save her. And she taught later on. We'll reveal. She saw Mary in her room or something. Yeah. Like, nope. She nope, died. I thought that too. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, since she's not dead when they're uh, taking her out of the house, I was like, okay, so yeah. she survived, and okay, and then oh, okay, never mind. Yes, I'm saying completely. Everyone always talks about like, oh, I want to subvert expectations. That's how you do it. It's like we all <laughs> thought it was. We all thought the same thing. Oh, she's gonna go to the hospital. No, we're gonna kill her right here, right in front yeah. of everybody, in front of the kids. Bye, bye, grandma. We're gonna watch grandma yeah. die. Yeah. Oh my god, dude! Mary. That was so amazing. <laughs> yeah, Mary. And then, and then, I'm gonna tell you what though. The moment I knew this movie was legit, <laughs> Kevin, is when Kevin takes a nosedive off the roof. Allison, what were your <laughs> thoughts about Splato Kevin? Because oh my god. <laughs> well, it was just it was really it was really well done. It was like really violent without actually showing the violence mm-hmm. of him hitting the watermelon pavement because you see him fall and then it cuts to Valerie Harper in the kitchen. And it'd been going back and forth this whole time between him on the roof and her in the kitchen and him on the roof and her in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. And then he, he's actually doing fine, but then some unseen hand opens the bedroom window, window yeah. as yeah. he's right on the other side of it. And it pushes him off the roof. And when he falls, you see, uh, you see Valerie Harper drop a watermelon on the kitchen floor, and it breaks into a million Flat. pieces. And it's like that is the stand-in for Kevin's body. And I was yep. like, <laughs> I was like, that is awesome and so messed up. And, oh yeah, you know, it's, it's like great. The rules of like, we kill if you kill a kid, it's it's serious horror. And then yep. you know, cut to 
ch tiny child casket. And I was like, wow, I know. Really has it all. <laughs> I know. I was like, oh my God, they just totally pulled a pet cemetery yeah. and they're going to cut right to the kid's funeral. And yeah. then, oh no. And then much like pet cemetery, we have the almost yeah, kind of like the, of the casket, yeah, 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 right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It falls yeah. in. The guy's not doing it right. And it collapses in. Oh my God. It's so I, messed well, up. I actually gonna, liked it. Oh, I'm sorry. Say, go ahead. That's not even the most messed up part of the scene in the movie. <laughs> like, I think that comes yeah. later. The yeah. Part, yeah. Oh, I think I so thought too. that was the most disturbing is like towards the end, but yeah, it's, it's, it's full on. Um, all these terrible things are happening. And I don't know if you noticed, but there's conversations throughout the movie about how the characters as they're the ones that are still kind of surviving are handling their grief. And yeah. the expectation of, well, you know, the sister died. This all happens within the span of a year, according yeah, yeah. to some lines that the mom says. So they lost the daughter not that long ago in the fire in the car. Um, and then all this other stuff happens. So, And then she loses her mother. And, and there's this talk about, like, well, you know, our daughter should be over her sister's death. I'm like, you don't yeah. ever get over no. A family member's death, like it, it, it changes form and you learn to cope with grief. But hmm. most of us have lost people at a certain yeah. point in our lives. And like, it's just like this really weird, but I almost felt fitting. It's like this family doesn't know how to deal with grief. And then the grief is like consuming right them there. all alive. Yeah. Yeah. Like That's it's what, coming this, back that, to very, get them. Thematically, it's Ari Aster in yes, show. it's totally Ari Aster. It felt very hereditary. That's what yeah. it was. Yeah, 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 I was, I like, I was like, like, I was like, did he see this as a kid, or yeah. did he time travel Maybe. and like work Maybe. for the network secretly? Yeah. I kind of liked the way w before uh, the frisbee ends up on the roof, and they they go out to play, and then he throws the frisbee, and and she's like, "Wow, how did you do that?" And he starts saying, "Well, you have to slant." Uh, 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 it felt like kids just playing. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking maybe she will throw it out on because the road is fairly. That's what I thought close. too, Peter. Yeah. I thought the it, same thing. Yeah. Yep. And then it ends up on the roof, and I thought, okay, well, he'll just climb up on it. And then, I mean, he starts here, yep. and he has to climb all the way yep. over here to get it. Yep. And I was like, why not? Could couldn't you have found anything closer to climb up on? And then when you see the shot of the windows, I was like, okay, someone's gonna something or someone yes. is gonna whoop. And, and uh, I want to go back black. to, again, giving credit to the direction, the, the, the whole thing, the direction, the writing, the editing, and the cinematography, because of the way they pace it. Like He's, he's walking along. It's a big house, right? It's a very big yeah. house. And they're, he's walking along the roof, and they, and they have those, those old tiles. I don't know what they're yeah. called. Maybe you guys know. But the, they're not. They're not. Are they wood? They're, they're like, like. Um, they look like metal. Yeah. Oh, there was some metal of them, some of them look metal. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. there were some that looked like, it was like wood, yeah. and they weren't completely secure. And they overlapped but he would, each other. He would have made it. If, yes, if it you totally been fine. Yeah. You would totally been fine. And so, yeah. but, we, but the smart thing is one, they have the sister like do that typical sister thing. I'm telling mom, she goes yeah. inside, right? But then yeah. we keep cutting back to Valerie Harper in the kitchen. She's obviously not been told anything because she would have come outside and said something. Yeah. So oh, where, yeah. so where did Mary go? Right? We know she didn't tell the mom. But then we don't. We see from inside this the camera. It's not done as like a POV shot yet. It's like the camera's no. slowly tracking. From inside, as we see him pass each window further along, and it's after he gets he gets a frisbee, throws it off the roof. He's on his way back, and it's just like we see that latch. It's like a great mm -hmm. buildup of suspense. We know what's coming, right? Uh -huh. And then and then the latch happens, and then all of a sudden, more of like a hand, held hand, handheld camera. Yeah. And he, you know, so he screamed before yes. the person got to the window, which implies yeah. to me it was not Mary because if it was Mary. He probably looked like what are you like? What are you doing? Because he just saw her. Yeah, but yeah. if he saw, which we'll get to, Jennifer, who we think yeah. he's, yes, I think that's why he's, because he turned and just screamed before the window had opened. He was screaming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and then rolling down and splat. Yep. Oh my God, dude. Then it was I wrote really down, well made. Bye -bye it was well done. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. well, it was very well <laughs> executed. Yeah. I'm just but, shocked. Uh, how well if you was. think about it, uh, if uh, uh, setting aside the grandma death with the iguana cam, but yeah. the conversation we, and we'll get to the next death, I'm sure right now, uh, the conversations before, yes, is kind of just like normal, yeah, yeah. and then end of yes. life. So, so I'm assuming we're getting to the dad in the bathtub. Daddy. <laughs> Well, yep. so we, we cut to him in the bathtub, right? And and the kids six head and they're he's like, Daddy, can I come? And, and all my kids are like, What the hell's going on? <laughs> yeah. 
they're like, why would why would you go and be like, well, let's just say. Our not friend, even in the bathroom, you're allowed. No, that's to be fair alone. when they're little, little. But I don't know that I would want. I would want my sons, little, or my daughter coming in when I'm when I'm having my margarita or whatever the hell he was enjoying. For, <laughs> listening to the game in the bathtub, listening to the game. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, so she comes in there. I mean, it was it was very innocent, very fine. But the way they said, but again, it's the Alfred Hitchcock. We yeah, know something's you know, gonna happen. Yeah. But, but she moves the radio. Yeah, but so it is like she doesn't do it like she's planning on hurting no, him. No, no, no. That's what I mean. There's never yeah. this sense with her, like other than when she's with the head shrinker, she's never ever gives off the like bad seed. I'm gonna no, kill we'll everybody vibe. Yeah, it's just very like and not over and like if you think about Patty McCormick in the bad seed, there whenever she's talking to her mom, it's like, Mommy, I wouldn't hurt anyone. You're like, Yeah, right, you little <laughs> psycho. But but in this, it's weird because like when she's with the doctor, she seems angry. Oh, maybe like, we should mm -hmm. mention that because the parents send her to this. Yes, reluctantly. The, the yeah, Phil is very yeah. reluctant, but yes, he does yeah, do it. Because she, uh, she, they think, well, she is uh, well dealing with, like uh, Allison yeah. said, grief about oh, her yeah. sister. And, yeah. and uh, Dennis Weaver's character, uh, Phil, is like, no, we can't do this. And then the stupid thing, and not because of the, the, the daughter or what her feelings, but because of what would his co workers think? Yeah. My daughter yeah. is going to the shrink. No, what would they? Yeah. Screw that. I mean, if your daughter is messed up, yeah, maybe she should. She sure. should but there, look, there's a lot of people that think that way. And honestly, yeah, 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 yeah. I also think it's always important. And we talked about like how this family doesn't want to deal with any of the problems. I think in 1982, that was probably even more prevalent, oh, right? Yeah. Where yeah, people definitely. were just like, oh, we, did, no, we like, didn't deal with anything. Yeah. I mean, like and, and Dennis Weaver's character is probably what pushing 50 at this point. Right. So oh, he's, yeah, and then, yeah, probably give or take. So he's probably a child yeah. of the depression. So he's like, mm -hmm. he's got a different mentality totally from what I think a lot of people nowadays might feel like when they're dealing with all this horrific crap happening to their family. Not everybody, obviously everybody deals with stuff differently, but I think that you always have to consider the historical context in which the thing was made. And in 1982, it seems totally fitting that especially the dad would be like, nah, she's, she'll get over it. Yeah, and again, <laughs> yeah, you don't, when we, don't yeah. get help, just drink. drink yeah, yeah, just drink your problem. Yeah, so, Self-medicate. That's always a healthier way to deal with your problem. Yeah, but that plays in later also. Well, not maybe later. It plays in now. And also with the argument he's had with his uh, his uh, mother-in-law with uh, just one for the road. just uh, And yeah. everything, which is also... Put in the good writing because everything fits in yeah. with what happens later yes. or what has happened before, and I love that because you don't think, wait, what is what is that? What is that argument? Uh, yeah, one know, for the I, road, one for the road. Yes, and I think that really at the end of the day, Allison, you already touched on this, but the the movie's theme, which is the how the the refusal to properly deal with your grief can lead to tragic consequences but it's again it's a theme that is explored through the dynamics of these characters and through the narrative but it's never this like smack you over the head messaging and that's why it works so freaking well it's so satisfying because it doesn't do that and like to your point peter the fact that they they allude to these things early on and they pay off yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, as things are revealed, and the dad is still drinking heavily, and you think, okay, well, he's which is why he lost his, his other job, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, I think it's, exactly. yeah, it's probably why he lost his other job. Yeah, yeah and it so, didn't help that, that that played a part in it because he's drinking even more, and now he's sitting in the tub, talking to his daughter, the younger daughter, pouring down the the spirits and yeah. listening to the game, and uh, and again we see, uh, and this plays in because they're ordering out, they're ordering pizza. And that's your go, uh, the, and all of this will, and, and everything ties in together. I love this about it. Yes, but we see him sitting there. You see her fidgeting around with the with the uh, hair dryer, and you see the radio. And there's shots of the water, and there's shots of the radio, shots of him, shots of the water. Yes, and it almost gets it builds. Yeah, and then the lights turn off. <laughs> well, yeah, what, what I love so so she plugs. Her, her, she, her, her, she actually unplugs his radio. Yeah. Right? And he's like, whoa, whoa, the game. whoa, put it back. Put it back. Oh, sorry, daddy. And it's very, again, she doesn't do the whole like, very to, to the game. Sorry, daddy. No, like no. there's none of that weird, you know, none of that. So oh, sorry, dad. And then she plugs it back in. She do, 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 goes on yeah, and she puts and, it on the, on the edge of the bathroom. She said, I, I, that's I, I, I told her to put it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So 
Then she leaves the room. And then all of a sudden, then we get some more of that back and forth stuff. And we just see the, the cord slowly get kind of, and then, and it, and then Valerie Harper, me is coming with the pizza. She set it down. The light, we hear that, the, yep. the lights go out. We know what's happened. Yep. Now, but then, <laughs> we all here's, do. But here's why I think it's even darker. She keeps, she goes to check the fuse box. <laughs> She, she turns it on and it's like, it comes on for a second. You go, hear that. And then, yeah. So you realize every time she did that. Yep. Imagine him being alive the first time I'm maybe, trying to get out of the top. Maybe. And it happens like three <laughs> times, it dude. So messed up. It is so dark. Yeah. It is so, so like, dark. like pro tip. If, if uh, your lights go off and your breakers off, Maybe go to the room it, that yeah. the breaker section is responsible for before you try to flip them back on and yep. see yeah. what's malfunctioning. Yeah. That, actually, that actually happened during our Christmas. So we had normally this time of year in Florida, it's super dry. And we had a massive rainstorm come through like over a 12 hour period. We got like two inches of rain. It was crazy. But I had our, our lights set up and I have a timer. And the way the cord was kind of short, so it's kind of like the timer's hanging out of the outlet, and the cord is kind of holding. It's not like upside down, but it's like it's a it's not down like it should be hanging uh -huh. down, right? Yeah. So what yeah. was ha what ended up happening is rainwater must have run Ooh, down the cord okay. and went uh -huh. into the timer, and sh and it's it's on the it's near my garage, so uh -huh. it shorted. But it, it's weird the way our our system is set up here because like half of the garage lights were fine it was only like certain things in the garage were out so but and then that same circuit affects the lights this, and, I, and this and this happened yeah it went dark exactly um <laughs> although i'm assuming that's what you did because you also froze with the lights still on peter oh, um, <laughs> it just weirdly <laughs> flickered yeah you're it flickered. haunted like peter was haunted um and so <laughs> the, but then the light in the hallway in one of my kids rooms and in the one laundry room went out but like the dryer in the large room is still running. It's very weird. So, and then I would go in, I flip the switch and I would turn on a light. It would go be on for like a couple, like with her a couple seconds, it would go out. And at first I didn't know what the hell was going on. I was like, son of, ah, I thought, you know, it was going to pay. That's butt. when you hear from another room. Daddy, daddy, please. Daddy. No, no, exactly. <laughs> I, I, but I thought I was going to have to call an electrician. I was like, great, yeah, there's something yeah. wrong. And, and it was weird. Like I put the light on in my son's room, which is further away. And after I flipped the fuse and it would stay on a little bit longer, like an extra 30 seconds, but then it go out. Finally, I went outside to take my dog for a walk and I looked up and I realized all the lights were out, but those lights were connected to that plug and it just clicked. I was like, oh, I know what it is. Mm -hmm. And I went over, unplugged it, and sure enough, that was the problem. My point being, if a circuit, go go, if you yeah. go check, <laughs> you won't do more oh, damage you to your dad in the bathtub because it it's like, it wasn't just that she flipped the switch on. It was like she flipped it on and it like, it's like you could really hear that. Yeah, like yeah, you yeah. Knew sparks flew and everything. Yeah, the sparks yeah. flew. You knew that they. She was just re-electrocuting him over yeah, was, and over again. Oh my god! Oh, completely unaware. Completely unaware. Yeah. So then she gives the, so the pizza messy. cutter to her daughter. Oh god! To, oh my god! And, and so be careful, honey. That's sharp. And mm -hmm. she starts cutting the pizza. Set up. Yeah, and then Valerie Harper goes upstairs, and then when she goes up, all of a sudden she starts just cutting, and it's like she's in a trance, right? And she's just slicing it, slicing it, slicing. and then all of a sudden it's almost like we don't see her anymore. We no, don't no, see you her. You see the pizza cutter. I just hit the it hit the yeah. the edge of the counter, and it just follows it along with all the stuff stuck to it, right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Then, <laughs> and then and then yeah. goes to the 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 stairs, and she's going up and the, the stairs. Yeah, up there. Yeah, up yeah, yeah. yeah. And then we see the, then the mom discovers her husband, and yeah. it's like her oh whole. My God. I electrocuted my husband. No, she and didn't. Say that. And then, <laughs> she, yeah. And then she opens the door, and Mary says, "What does Mary say? Do you remember?" She says something when she's holding the pizza cutter. She says uh, something about the either like the pizza's ready, mommy, or yes, yeah, something like because she's very kind of not cheerful, but it's yes, like, oh, very it's like it's a, yeah, yeah, it's gonna be all okay. And then she, oh no, 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 no. Like, I said she 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 says something. I, I cut extra large pieces for daddy. That's or something yeah, like yeah. That. yeah. She does say that at some point. Yeah. Large pieces for daddy, small pieces for us, mommy. And yeah. then oh, she slams the door it. like that pizza cutter like goes like into the door. Yep. <laughs> oh They're my sharp. god. And then, and then she goes, and then basically she comes around the corner. Gets startled by the. I think does the daughter cut it or I don't even remember. Did she try to cut it or? Yeah, I she think she. The, yeah. The phone cord. That's yeah, what, the she phone cord. Cut the phone yeah, cord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a great. That was so smart though. It was like, how do you get her to cut? Like she cuts the cord right when she's calling nine one one. The mom ends up getting knocked down the stairs, and I literally turned to my kids and said, "Oh my god, this whole <laughs> movie is going to be this little girl wiping out her whole family." <laughs> 
<laughs> I was like, are you kidding? Almost. Me? Yeah. Almost. Almost. Yeah. So or then, then again, if, you, if we get to the last ending shot, maybe she actually did. Maybe she did. I don't know. We'll get so, to that. so then the Valerie Harper ends up getting in her car, getting away, going to the hospital, and getting bandaged up, right? Mm -hmm. And drugged too. And drugged. Yeah. And I will say, I, I don't know if I, I I don't know how I feel about this, and I want your your you guys to tell me what you think. The only problem I think I have with this movie is it feels like it has too many endings. It felt like it was going to end mm -hmm. with, you know, okay, the daughter's been locked away. They're going to check her out. Valerie Harper goes home, right? And then yeah, that hold that scene with the shot from above. Yes, and we're, that's the, what we get. Mary sitting so there, and that's, that's what chair. I thought was going to be the yeah. end. Like, I, yeah. so we what what Peter's alluding to is we're in essentially like a padded room, and it's such a again, this is so cool and creative. The shot is like bird's eye view directly overhead, like slowly turning right yeah, and, and the then doctor. we cut cut to yeah. the and, and, and mary is like in a this little girl she's like 10 in a straight jacket yeah. her hair's all and she is all messed up all messed up and then the doctor's like circling her and the camera's tracking with the doctor and then and then tracking around mary and it's just like very a lot of camera we know in this very small space it's yeah. very dingy very gross looking this is this is where we get the flashback, where we get what actually yes. happened. The, the yeah. ultimate reveal. And then we get to see that Jennifer and her weren't close. Jennifer and my, it looked like actually Jennifer and Kevin were more in cahoots to terrorize. Yeah, I thought so too. I was like, you know, wait, wait, is Mary the bullied one? And she looks yeah. all down, downtrodden and everything. And I was like, yes. oh, man. And then, so but then again, because this movie kind of messes with your expectations the whole time, you, I thought it was going to end up being revealed that Mary was a little psycho. She mm -hmm. used this opportunity for her family, like being in the car, that like she either caused the car crash or once the car crash happened, because it was revealed that she didn't cause it, but they had tied Jennifer's no, no, shoelaces together. Grandma and daddy in the drinking contest, basically. One yeah, that was the all. Road, the yeah. dad was drunk when he, when he sat down to drive yeah. home. Yeah, and what I like though is that that's what was said at the beginning, and that's true. Like that actually is yeah. what happened. Yeah. And then and then they tied Jennifer Shillings together, which then implies. And, and by the way, having three kids, I could verify this. And Peter, I, you've got like eighty kids, so you could definitely verify it. Um, <laughs> and then the the fact that they siblings will like gang up on one, they'll join yep. for forces. I, Peter, I don't know if you were oh, yeah, trying like, to like you and Daryl does on Retro Movie Geek. Yeah. We do like Peter and I. I, 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 did, I did like this five kids. That's what I have. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I think you're flicking me off at it for a no, no. <laughs> uh, But but the but the thing is like some when they were young they don't do it as much now. But when they were little they would do that like my my older and my middle would mess with the little one my little one and the older one would mess with the middle like they would totally do this strategic thing. So that felt very real to me that the kid Kevin was when it was the older sister, Jennifer messing with Mary. And then when Jennifer fell asleep, Mary and Kevin are messing with her. So they tie her shoelaces together and then the car crash happens. Everybody gets out of the car, but Mary shuts the door on Jennifer. Now one could say, Oh, she did that to get Mary killed, but she didn't know the car was going to blow up. Right. No. So she just did it. Guys like, I'll oh, screw you. I'm not gonna let you out. She slams the door in the kid's face. Is that how you took it? Allison? Yeah, I don't think she had any idea what was going to no. happen. Yeah, and then the car blows up. And I think that is what made Mary snap, right? Now it's like she feels mm -hmm. ultimate guilt because she did that. Had she not done that, Mary could have gotten out of the car and at least enough away from it to survive. So I yeah. think that that was so well done because we've now established, okay, this is why Mary yeah, is. Yeah, because Philip, uh, Dennis Weaver character, he asks, are you, are you, are you kids all? Over? And they say, yeah, we are. But uh, Jennifer's still in the car, dad. And he runs to get it. And then boom, boom. So, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then when, when Mary is telling all this, right. And we see search talking about, you know, I'm Mary's dead. I'm Jennifer. It's like, Oh, oh my so God. this whole time it's a, it's one of those Sybil things. It's like a split personality, but then, all, right, so they take her off in a gurney. She's she's this mm -hmm. poor kid, as she put it in the nut the house. Look on her, <laughs> yeah, the look on her face got all oh, dark under well, the eyes. She, I mean, yeah, she, she, feral. she shifts because Jennifer is talking to the psychiatrist, and then she says. I already told Mary I'm not going to stick around a psychiatric yeah. hospital. Yeah. And then or, or or I'll say it for you. Nuthouse. <laughs> Nuthouse. Well, and then she that's says, what a kid would call it. That's what a kid would call it. Yeah, 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 she yeah. says yeah. to she says to Mary, she's or Mary starts pleading. You hear Mary's voice, and Mary's like, "Please don't leave me. Like, yeah. I don't want to be left alone." And that really 
without giving too much away, I don't want to spoil the Black Coat's daughter, but there's a moment in the movie The Black Coat's Daughter oh, where yes. there's like a similar please don't leave me moment, like involving yeah. some possession stuff. And I was like, oh, that's really chilling and creepy yeah. and sad. I, mean, I, and I, I think I remember what you're talking about. I haven't seen that movie in years and I need to rewatch it because I loved it back in the day when I saw it. But I think I know what you're talking about. And I, yeah, I don't want to give it. If it's what I think it is, I don't want to go any further. But yeah, uh, yes, so, that, that's a so good point. She, she like seemingly whether a, a possessive force or through like leaving as a dominant Psychotic. personality she yeah. leaves and then the psychi psychiatrist is talking to a very devastated heartbroken mary who's very sad very scared doesn't know what the heck's going on and then they put her on the hospital bed and wheel her yep. out of there in her little straight jacket yep. and we like, and then oh. and then we get another ending well, yeah. we're back yeah. to the house when we got to this scene after this uh, reveal and she's sitting there and that because this whole with the uh, with her sitting there kind of talking with jennifer's voice and herself and getting kind of left alone at this uh, at the nut house as they call it and when they kind of wheel her out and it, it, all of that uh, like I, was th I, I thought okay so this is how the movie ends so i wrote down that is one messed up ending before we do the end then hold on I, I would have to go back and check, but I think what is, Oh, really, Peter, I can see it on your phone now. <laughs> yeah. That's so creepy. Uh, but the, uh, the, the scene right before we see Mary in the room, the, the camera before had come up like to the community where it's at like community hospital and it'd been like this tracking yeah, yeah, yeah. shot. Yeah. yeah. It's like handheld and kind of mm. rushes up to it. And, and then we go to, the, so it's almost like, Mayor, uh, sorry, Jennifer was visiting yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. at that point. And I, I didn't I was, put two and two together. I, on that. That. Yeah, I, I didn't think that until okay. like just now as we're talking, but yeah. then, and then, so Peter, the reveal. So we go back to the house, thir the thir home of 13666. Yeah. Mom yeah, the mom's in taking back there. Yeah. Talk yeah, away. She's got her nurse. And, yeah. The, 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 the helpful Sarah gives her her meds. Sarah's yep. going to, if you remind me of is the end of black Christmas. Like it had yeah. to me, like, oh, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. she's drugged she's with one alone. person left there. One person's there taking care of her theoretically. And yeah, she's drugged and in the bed alone. And then, so Sarah, she, she has an issue. She, she, I think, does she have a bad dream or something? And the, or Sarah, I can't remember. No, Sarah knocks at the door, right? Yeah. Sarah just, knocks at the door. Any, if there's anything you want or any other. Yeah, I think you want, I think you need. No, I'm yeah. fine. She leaves. A few seconds go by. And then, and then also a lighter knock. And yeah. she's like, Sarah, then, yeah, come back in, Sarah. And then, Nobody answers, and then all of a sudden you oh see the God. silhouette. I was, I, <laughs> oh, <laughs> and I was the, sitting here in the dark watching. Yeah, it. The, the foot of the bed. Yeah, the yeah. silhouette. And it's all dark, and up. she just and then she she sits in that position, like in the photo. It's just I'm it's yeah. So so just so anyone about. listening knows Jennifer. <laughs> yeah, is is actually there. The mom sees her, and Jennifer just smiles and gives her a yeah. wink, and the mom I screams. Mommy. Freeze frame hi, and crit. Yo, she says hi. Say hi, mommy. She says hi, hi mommy. mommy. Yeah. Yeah. Wink and winks. And then freeze frame. And that and that freaking smile. Oh my god. It was amazing. It was so great. And and Frank Frank or Ed the iguana, like they even show a clip oh, yes. of him in yep. the next room still in his in his aquarium. And so I'm just <laughs> like Ed, Ed the iguana is the last family member standing. Yep. That's <laughs> true. He's thinking, I need to get out of this house. Now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, no, it's it, terrifying. And what's interesting though is you couldn't even it leaves it open to interpretation enough. Yeah, yeah. Was that was that really Jennifer, or is this house something is in this house that's taking yeah. advantage of their Their're grief things, things, things. And, and their tragic? Right? Is it something maybe yeah. that you they came in with such bad energy, for lack of a better way of putting it, that it yeah. fed into you've whatever's that. in this yeah. house you've and you've it manifests other movies? Yeah, yeah. That's what so, that, yeah. I mean. It could be that, or it could just be Jennifer was a real. She was. Malevolent. P she was a, she was a little POS spirit. in life and a real POS. In uh -huh. death. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! It was so good, dude. I'm 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 legit. Like this is in my top five that we've covered easily. I love <laughs> it. Also, with the with the uh, the, the actress, I kind of looked them up. I mean, you have uh, uh, what is this uh, name? Do, 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 Robert Weber, who played Doctor Cole. Yeah, I recognized him. What is oh he, man, he's been well. He's been in um, a lot of the 
Oh, what is the Blake Edwards movies? Uh, Sob and all that. Okay. And, uh, yeah. He was in I, Ten, Revenge of the Pink Panther. Okay. Midway, and he's I, also I, been in. I've seen stuff. all of those, but it's been literally decades. But he's one of those guys who, like, I soon yeah, as yeah, I saw yeah. him, I recognized it, and it seemed like it was from something funny. I just couldn't remember what he's also it looks like. Private oh. Benjamin with Goldie Hawn. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Oh, he was in Twelve Angry Men. Which I watched about a year or so ago with my kids, so maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, well, that's uh, not a comedy. <laughs> no, it's it's to be fair, it's definitely, not, but it's a brilliant film that I love. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and the dirty He's dozen. Also something, uh, yeah, a TV miniseries called "Something Is Out There." Anyone remember that one? Seeing it, it is really hard to come by nowadays. Is it like an, is it an alien? An alien one? thing? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a good. It's, one. I vaguely remember that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if I watched it, but that title re is reminiscent to me. Yeah. Oh, he was in Nuts, the Barber, the Babs movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, oh, and like Flynn, you already mentioned that, right? You said yeah, yeah, like yeah. Flynn. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, yeah there's really a lot cool. of regular. I mean, the, even uh, what is uh, the Dr. Robin Samuel who doesn't really do anything, just walk around. Uh, yes. Mary. I mean, she was. Uh, she's been on a lot of stuff too. So uh, she was very familiar. Turf. Yeah, tough turf. Okay. <laughs> it's another TV movie. movie. <laughs> yeah, we covered that on Retro yes. Geek. No, that, no, that was, was, that was, that James, was that James Was that yeah. James Spader? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that oh, was the she first was in, uh, instrument. She was in Sleeping with the Enemy, which for whatever reason I always, always forget is directed by uh Joseph Rubin, who did Stepfather. No, oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. That movie uh, kind of fits the stepfather, I feel yeah, like. Yeah, it's got, what it is, is that to be Joseph Rubin makes the best Lifetime movies ever. Because that's what the stepfather and Sleeping with the Enemy are. They're like, if all Lifetime movies were like high-end, good-budgeted movies. <laughs> yeah, because like they're both well-made and yeah, disturbing. Yeah, and yeah, really messed I mean, up and awesome, yeah. And she may pop up because she was in a movie, a TV movie called The Possessed. It feels like that's going to pop up in okay. our, uh, somewhere. All right, cool, cool, cool. Well, all yeah. I got to say is if you've never seen it, which first time I'm mad at you for listening this long, if you've never seen it, let me go spoil it for you. <laughs> but you should, you should still watch it. It's, yeah, I, yeah. I, it honestly, like, legit, pay attention when you're watching it for, and I'm going to rewatch it again just to re. Yeah, pay there's a lot of. It's the camera work, yeah. the editing, the staging, the blocking, the fact that, like, there's a scene where the parents are in Kevin's room after he's died, and Phil is in the foreground at Ed's. Terrarium. Yeah, because yeah, he's he's again with grief. He's like, I because I, she wants to get rid of the iguana. And yeah, he's, he's like, like oh, no, I, I want to, I want to keep him. He's this like, is my son. But yeah, I don't that, know. I, totally, I never paid attention. I, that's what he asked. Uh, they don't you know feel, what he eats. They don't know. No, what exactly. He eats. I didn't pay attention to my, I what. Pay, uh, yeah, when he, when Kevin yeah. was around, I didn't pay attention. He started to feel, feed him like a large, like look at a giant piece of cabbage or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah. dangling sure. it in front of him. As, and, a, and as then, a reptile, as a reptile owner, I was shaking my head so hard. Like, come on, buddy. He's like, you'll die, and I was like. The iceberg lettuce you're waving in front of his face is it gonna is it no. gonna help? <laughs> no, it isn't. Oh, I, about, one of my sons it's has a bearded dragon, and he will uh -huh. feed it like greens and stuff. But he yeah. has to like shred them, and he and, you know, and, you know, put like a little salad. But he but he also eats like you know, black soldier fly larva and all that protein. other stuff. <laughs> yeah, they need protein. So and like uh, dark green stuff. But anyway, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so so hour is over. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but but the, the the thing that was interesting is that that way that scene was staged. So Valerie Harper's in the doorway, in the yep. background, and it's like over his shoulder. It's very well, like everything is very well put together, right? It's like it's just she's in the shot. They're both facing us, so we get to see their react. Even though his back is to her, so that's sending a certain body language message, right? Mm -hmm. And they're having this discussion. They start getting this argument about how she feels like she's having to take on everything, which most likely she was. And yeah. and, and and like he's like, fine, I'll do it. I'll I'll. She's like, you were going to go through and sort through his little pants and his little yeah, shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like that little touch. It's like, oh my God. <laughs> okay, so that horrifying. reminds me of another thing that was like this family, like they're immediately packing up their yeah. loved ones stuff right after they die. And it's just like, can that wait? Like, are you, unless you're moving mm -hmm. and you, or you need the room for some reason, yeah. like just but, again, give yourself again, some time to grieve before you decide realized. what to keep and what yeah. to donate. I mean, everybody has to go through that and make those decisions. But it's like, it doesn't have to be immediate. It doesn't have to be now. And like, it's just so fresh. It's like, she's packing up Ruth Gordon's character's yeah. room right after fit, she Peter, dies. Yeah, I was gonna say, Peter, I don't know if this is what you're about to say. That's all shut up. But 
that fits with his family. Like it was yeah. established. Yeah, the they're so dysfunctional. And, and also, that's what Jennifer tells Mary afterwards. Oh, she, they're already packing up. And guess what? You're not coming with them. They're buying, yeah. they're going to a, a, a smaller yes. place. So you're yeah. going to be locked up at the nut house. <laughs> so that also kind of, that that kind of fits with the with the yeah. We, I, the, we the don't quotation. deal with our problems. We pack them into boxes yes, and join. Exactly. Right? <laughs> they literally and metaphorically do that, and that's what I love. So then, but that leads him to the closet, which leads him to find Ed's food, yeah. right? And it's <laughs> and like it, a, a break a break yes. point. Like, oh look, here's the food. And, oh, I found yeah, it. it's, yeah. it's always like they both shift. They went from this very dark argument yeah. to. Where they look like it was the end of their marriage to, oh, we can save Ed. We're okay, we're okay now. Everything's, everything's <laughs> so fine. It's okay. Everything's Ed's okay. We're okay. <laughs> and it was it's just so great. Like I love from yeah. just a pure n storytelling dynamic. I, I just thought this movie was exceptionally well put together. I'm I again I, I know there's been a few we've covered that all I did was gripe. So when we come across one that <laughs> that, that really hit, like hits me in the right in, in the right fields. I just yeah. loved it, dude. I love it. Kind of sets so up for the next choice. Oh God, here we go. All right. <laughs> All right well, I, I have to pick it, so we know it's going to probably be a stinker. So yeah, we'll let's uh, see. The ones taken are. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know it is. Uh, two, five, six, seven, and eleven are taken. Two, five, six, seven, and eleven. So we haven't yeah. done three yet. Nope. Let's do let's do the number of 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 kids that I have three <laughs> and the number of deaths in this movie. Oh, oh, true, fair enough. Okay, number three. Yes. Let's see. Okay, so we're going back to 1970, and it's a movie called "The Old Man Who Cried Wolf." Really? Oh. Hmm. I've heard of the boy who up, cried wolf. Yeah, yeah. kind of sets something up. I think. Oh, uh, well, it, it puts an image in your mind. Okay. Yeah. 1970, I, The Old Man Who Cried Wolf. My, my knee-jerk reaction is it's a werewolf movie, but I could be wrong. Uh, every time there's been a wolf in the title, it's not been a werewolf. And it's so it, it's, nope. Yeah, that's true. And it's, it's always like they make you think it is at first. Yeah, the only something thing, else. The only thing with a werewolf with Death Moon, <laughs> it didn't which have did, a wolf in the title. It didn't have wolf in the title. That's true. <laughs> that was the Hawaiian one, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that one was Cheeseball City. It was kind it of was, fun, though. <laughs> but it was fun. Yeah, here's the thing. And that's why I wish everyone who is listening or watching understands. From my point of view, I don't expect them remotely at all to be like, don't go to sleep as far as the no. writing and the, and the thematic element. No, I just want to be entertained and have it be cheesy fun. And when it's mm -hmm. not, and it's like watching paint dry, that's when you... That's when I get annoyed. Because like, come on, man. I mean, either give me some of something of substance or just entertain me purely out of the cheese factor. Oh, this I'm one starts uh, one. Lucci. No, I'm just kidding. What? <laughs> I'm kidding. She, she would have been like no she would have been like 12 years old. As a, yeah, I have no idea. All right. Well, all I right. am uh, happy that we covered this. That is for sure. I, uh, I, I I assume both of you are happy. I assume both of you mm -hmm. would recommend anyone check this thing out. Yes. And uh, okay. Allison, in the meantime, where can they find you? <laughs> um, pretty much just here. <laughs> uh, we're, I, we're happy about that for what it's yeah, worth. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or you can check Definitely. out my old my old podcast at thehauntedDavenport.com. Um, or you can check out Halloween stuff on Instagram at Clark Memorial Gardens if you're cool. so inclined. Cool, cool, cool. Which you should. Both of those things. <laughs> it, indeed. And Pitor, where can they find ye? Here uh, on the Turn of the Tube, or they can go to Retro Movie Geek. Uh, the <sighs> How to put this nicely? <laughs> the, 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 the unmonitored daycare of podcasts. There you go. There I you go. Like, I feel like that's something similar to what Jay has said about maybe his movie podcast weekly, but yeah, I think it so still too. applies. Yeah. yeah, It still applies, yeah. Or they can go to well, the old stuff, Rich, uh, Forgotten Flicks, or they can go to uh, um, to Hughes' podcast, The Undead Wookiee. Yeah. They should. They they got should. Stuff. And uh, yes, of course, and I can be found at some of those places. I've even done Hughes' show uh, once, which was awesome. Um, and Cemetery, what's that? Pet Cemetery. Yes, wasn't it, I, I believe it was. Yeah. Yes, it was. Because I'm always happy to go on to any show and talk about Pet Cemetery or People there Under the go. Stairs or The Stepfather. Everybody who's listening, just know that. Uh, and uh, uh, let's see the uh, Richard Movie Geek, of course, and Jay of the Dead's new horror movies. 
uh, and uh, that's always a good time. We actually haven't recorded in a while. I'm, I think now that we're going to the new year, we should be recording here again, which I'm looking forward to. Uh, and of course, if you're watching this, you know this already, but uh, Mom and Pop Video Shop, uh, we are we put a new video out every Monday. We're trying something different here in the new year uh, on our Monday videos. We'll see how it works. I don't want to say it yet for the purposes of when this drops versus when that's come out. Though the first couple episodes of the new year probably have already dropped by the time this is out, but still. Um, and uh, yeah, and then and we're going to try to get in the habit of doing at least one live stream a month and one episode at least every month of this show. This is the January episode. So we will record another one in January because I at least want to do one a month with this show as well because... Yes, I, don't, I, I love the show and I hate the fact that it seems like sometimes we go like two months before we, and it's always my fault. So I'm like, God dang it. I want to do this no, more, what? but life happens, but it we does do happen. Do, do, we, we have been, well, if you don't count the first and second episode where we went a whole year. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's because we didn't have Allison yet. Now, 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 <laughs> yeah. now, now it's like, it's like we, we need to do at least once a month, once a month. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, be sure to check all of that great stuff out. Uh, and until next time, remember when it's late at night, and you can't sleep, you might find yourself flipping through the channels. If you do, beware, because you never know when you just might stumble across terror on the tube.